Okay. Hi, Eric. Hi, Eric. Okay. <sighs> I guess we're moving. Make it interesting. I don't go to bed. I have such a headache. Okay. All right. I tend to walk around. Let me make sure you can see me. Oh. Oh. Can you see me? Can you see me now? Oh, there I am. Okay, I'll try to stand still so uh, we don't. Uh... <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for that. Thank you, Greg. I needed to know that. Okay, welcome, everybody. I cannot see everyone online. Is there any anybody new? Can you see Matt? Anybody new? you don't recognize a name and I think everybody in the meeting here is joined and we know who you all are now um so we're good yeah there's a few people we haven't seen Brenda and uh, Dave's in the back and Sue and so it's nice to see some folks in person again Okay, so we have a little bit of um, business to go over. Um, as um, Matt mentioned last time, we're only going to do business on the nights we have speakers and on the nights we have competitions, we will no longer do business um, because we have to be out of here by 10. And if we're not out of here by 10, the alarm goes off and the Cranberry police come in force. So we don't want to do that. Um, so we have a few announcements. <laughs> Now it's really dark. All right, a few things we want to go over. And let me start with Linda. You want to come up, Linda? Okay. Just to let everybody know, we have money in the bank. Um, Eric, we can pay you. So, you know, no problem with that. Um, we closed the post office box to save that money. Everything's going to my home address care of the CDCC and care of Linda DeAngelis. So if anybody's sending it, if anybody has sent anything to the post office box, let me know. Um, they're supposed to be forwarding things, but I've not gotten anything. So we'll see what happens. Um, there was a question about ribbons. And my first thought was to say no, but um, I've relented. We have plenty of ribbons left for honorable mention for second and third. The best of show, we have about a year's worth. Um, and the company that we ordered them from, <laughs> the company we ordered them from isn't even making them anymore. So if at that time we need to um, order them from someplace else, we'll have to find them. Um, my caveat on that is we'll still send out the um, electronic copies, uh, certificates that Rose sends out. If you desire a ribbon, send me an email with that so I know what one to get and you must come to a meeting and pick them up. I'm not mailing them, nothing like that. So if you want a ribbon, I'll give you a ribbon, but you've got to pick them up. That's my only caveat on them. Sure, I can do that but I will not make them out ahead of time. I used to make them out so that they were printed and that kind of stuff. Now you'll just get my, you'll get my sloppy handwriting. So oh, that's true. <laughs> that's all I had. Terrific, thank you, Linda. Okay, so uh, hopefully that will satisfy those folks who uh, were asking for, uh, for ribbons. Um, 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 let's see, Valerie, you're standing up. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Valerie's going to announce next uh, our next speaker, maybe. So I thought I had it, but the next topic will be um, street photography. And I can't get online to get you the name of the person, and I am not remembering at this moment. Okay. But the description will be available on the website. For the, I'm going to give it to Joe, so it'll be up, uploaded soon. Thanks, Ralph. Thank you. Okay. Um, Melinda. We're going to wing it. And, and we can show on screen what the kind of wrote. Oh, I don't have the email. Do I I don't have the email, but we can show on okay. the there we go. Thank you. Oh, oh, I hate it. Front that <laughs> so um, PSA, the PID, the projected image division, um, round two ends tonight at midnight. So if you haven't voted, please vote. Um, there's two categories, the color and the monochrome. And uh, what did I want to say? Um, so how do we vote? Oh. You want me to go through that whole thing? Okay. <sighs> Competitions. So in order to, oh, and only members in levels two, three, and four can vote. Uh, level one can view, but they can't vote. PSA, I can't even see that. Yes, okay, PSA vote. Click on color, view, yep, and vote. And then you score them. Okay, record your scores at the top. If you don't, they won't count. Go back down to monochrome, view and vote, same thing. Record your scores. There you go. Thank you, Matt, for your lovely picture. You stole that from me. Yeah. And that's pretty much all you have to do. Pretty easy. And the third round ends I think it's March 29th, and uh, I have to have the pictures to PSA by April 15th. So we still have one more round. Thank you, Debbie. You're welcome. Rose, we're gonna unmute you so you can talk. Yes, we have to unmute her. <laughs> Matt, what, Matt said, do we have to? Well, you know, it's, it's up to him. All right, so I only have like really one thing two things maybe. One, I'd like a little bit of feedback on the newsletter, how if people like it, the format, and two, if there's anything that they'd really like to see in the newsletter. I've been trying to roll out different things each month and adding to it, but some ideas would be really helpful. Okay, so if anybody has any ideas, you can either email Rose or, um, you know, any, any one of us, and we'll make sure she gets it. You don't have her email. And uh, I think it's beautiful, Rose. Thank you. I think Thank it's you. wonderful. Um, is uh, Terry on the line? Did Terry have anything for NJFCC? Okay. All right. Um, well, Wayne, where are you, Wayne? Come talk. Talk. Come talk. No, I don't, I don't do a, I don't do a good Philly accent anymore. Um, okay. So I have been um, given an oppor uh, opportunity to do an exhibition at the Plainsboro library. It's going to be May and June. Uh, the title is nature versus the built world. At this point we have, I think it's four of us um, figure. I've got about 60 linear feet of wall space to exhibit. Uh, let's see a few dates. Um, I need to have, okay, by by March 15th, I need an art, the artist's headshot and the thumbnails uh, of the JPEGs of the photos. Um, need a business card. Um, I'm going to do an artist talk uh, for, re for the reception. I think that's the 13th of May, if I recall correctly. Um, obviously the, we'll all be able to, to be there and talk about our own, our own pieces. Um, I'm going to, I'm figuring on getting those submissions for all of us who are participating by March 8th. So I can have them to the library by the 15th, uh, hanging May 3rd and 4th. 
Um, exhibition begins May 6th, reception May 13th, uh, ends the 24th. Um, so it's basically um, nature encroaching on taking back uh, from what we tried to build. Wayne, can you send me those dates in an email, please? So I can put uh, them in sure. the newsletter. Thank you. Sure, can do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wayne. Okay, um, Matt has a couple things for us. Yeah, uh, basically you have to upload your competition images, which is macro by February 19th, midnight. Uh, the other thing I have is we have another competition coming up or a gallery show, I'm sorry, the Gorgon, and that's going to be in May. Uh, I'll confirm the exact dates, but it's probably going to be the first Friday till the last Monday, maybe, because uh, we don't, I think it, that month only goes to Monday. So, but I'll send an email out with the dates. That's okay. all I have. Terrific. All right. Gorgon. The one up here in the municipal building, Cranberry Municipal Building. Okay. And that's whatever you want to put in. It's, we don't, you know, judge your prejudge anything. So whatever you want to put in, it's open. And you can usually take about three per member, right? Three or four per member. So start thinking about what you like to put in. Brenda, you say something? Oh, she's waving. <laughs> <laughs> We're amused by cameras. <laughs> it's novel. This is the first time Brenda's been here in a while. <laughs> okay. Um, would like to announce our um, speaker. Um, where did he go? He's up there. Okay. So our speaker tonight, uh, the, the program is going to be high-key, low-key photography. And our speaker is Eric Gorbin. Uh, Eric, Eric is local somewhat. Um, I think you're in Flemington, you said, right? Oh, you can unmute him. Yeah. You can unmute yourself. Yeah, I, I, yeah sorry. Uh, yeah. In Bridgewater. Bridgewater. Okay. It's pretty close. All right. So um, Eric is a photographer and a photo instructor focusing on the creative aspects of the photographic art form. He has over 40 years of experience in the complete photographic process, including analog photography, darkroom work, and extension, extensive digital imaging. His digital imaging experience includes 25 years of using Photoshop, probably when it started then, <laughs> and other digital imaging applications. He frequently judges photo contests, presents on photography, exhibits his fine art photography. Uh, he also um, uh, photographs events, conducts workshops uh, with focuses on creative aspects. Um, his street photography workshops are conducted in New York City and Philly. He was the curator of the small town in black and white photography exhibit at the Hamilton Street Gallery in Boundbrook, New Jersey, and a judge for multiple jury exhibits uh, throughout the state. He is an active speaker in camera clubs, including special presentations for the Cosmopolitan chapter of PSA, the New Jersey Federation of Camera Clubs Conference. Eric is the recipient of numerous awards and photo contests, and his work has been published in the U.S. and internationally. So um, welcome, Eric. Thank you for Thank being you. here. Thank you. You have a very old resume. I mean, now the, the bio is about six bullets. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, we, we got you. Yeah. We got you. The, all, all everything. Yes. So, yeah. Thank you for inviting me. So, um, the program tonight is high key, low key. Uh, it's a topic that I often see camera club competition in camera co club competitions. And uh, I know many of the members are confused as to uh, what it is and then how to do it. And one of the things when I started working on the program, I've done high key and low key uh, for a while now. Uh, and but when I prepared the program, I started looking online to get, uh, just to see what ideas, how people do it. And, and it got really confusing. Everybody agrees on what the final product looks like, but how to get there, uh, you'll see some 
confusing um, uh, information. So I think I'll try to demystify it and show, and, and what the way it was done with film, now we can do it differently because we can use uh, the tools uh, that we have uh, with either Lightroom or Camera Raw or uh, Photoshop or any other tools to, uh, to fine tune the images or even create them. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll, we'll have enough time. The last part, I'd like to demonstrate a couple of techniques, just it will be pretty quick. Um, so I'll go right into it. Uh, I'll accept questions uh, anytime during the program. You can unmute if you are in the room, just uh, somebody please stop me and ask the question. I cannot read the chat while I'm presenting. So if you put it in the chat, it will have to wait. But I don't mind being interrupted. Let me move the Zoom panels out of the way. Okay. Do you see my screen? Yes. Okay, thank you. So, uh, Haiki Loki. So on the left is Haiki, on the right is Loki, and we're done. I told you it would be quick. Okay, so I'll talk about the definitions, what uh, we mean by Haiki, Loki. I'll talk about the correct characteristics of each one of them. I'll talk about uh, how we can use the effects to create mood or uh, for to use it for expression. And uh, we'll see how to handle it in camera, in post-processing. And in most cases, I like to do it uh, with both. And as I mentioned, I'll do a quick uh, demonstration at the end. So what are they? And if we understand the history behind it, how it started, we'll see it will also explain to some degree why it's uh, the instructions on how to do it. If you look it up online, why it's so confusing. Because in the past, it started really with motion picture that uh, film was slow um, and you couldn't take long exposures uh, for movie, for in motion picture. So they had high key to really, if they wanted bright, airy, happy scenes, they had to put lights in different, from different directions, high power, and really make the scene very bright. Uh, and when they wanted to create some more moody scenes, they only used one light or one light or a couple of lights and really only illuminated certain portions of the scene. So that's really how it started, but then because they used it to control mood, then it kind of uh, moved into uh, still photography and we use it today uh, just to get the effect. Um, so high key, they have mostly light tones, light, large white areas, even large white areas that have no texture. Uh, and what's important, they are usually low contrast because the and the aspect ratio between the light sources is very low, which means all the lights are about equal power. Low key is the opposite. We have mostly dark scenes. Uh, they create some mood uh, and the light is on a small portion of the screen. So we have a high uh, lighting uh, ratio because we'll have some light that is very powerful and the rest of the areas will be dark. So it all started with the three-point lighting uh, approach and the three, I still use it when I shoot portraits, uh, often when I shoot still life, I'll have a key light. On the other side, I'll have a fill light and usually the key will be a little bit more powerful than the fill. And then we'll have the backlight to or kick light uh, to just give some light from the back, separate it, the subject from the background uh, and create some, if it's a person, create some nice light on the, on the cheekbones. Um, so 
high key is really low lighting ratio, which means these lights will be about equal power and everything will be lit. Low key will be high lighting ratio, which means the key light will be bright and the others will either be off or very low power. So that's what the idea is. But what's really important to remember is the low lighting ratio versus the high lighting ratio. So one, we have equal lighting, very bright. The other one, we have relatively dark scene with high ratio. So one light source is stronger than the others. But do we need a lot of lights? And that's what you'll see. So I'll show you two very simple examples. This one, not great pictures, but I want to really demonstrate the point. This one is high key, right? Very bright, uh, no blacks. There are no blacks in this picture and mostly bright, including some white, completely white areas. What I used for lighting, I had one flash and I shot the flowers against the sky. The flowers, I put them on top of a tripod with a little uh, platform and I did outside in my yard. The same flower, the same flesh in exactly the same location. And I did low key. All I did, I turned about 90 degrees. Instead of shooting up towards the sky, we have uh, probably about 30 feet from where I was standing, we have dark evergreen trees and they're in the shade. So they were very dark because I used the flesh on the flowers, uh, the background really dropped to be almost black. So here I created high key, low key, mostly in camera with a single flesh. And you know what? I probably could have done it without the flesh, but just to show the idea. So it's not that difficult. And you see more examples that I do with very simple techniques. So if we look at the histogram of a standard normal picture, it's pretty equal. Usually there is some ramping here, so a little bit higher in the center of the, these are the brightness, the distribution of the brightness of the pixels. Uh, so it's, actually the number of pixels at each level of uh, exposure. So normally in a standard picture, we'll have a pretty flat or a little bit of a curve and it normal picture. If we look at high key, we'll have almost no pixels with low exposure and we'll have uh, a big pile up on the right hand side with the bright pixels. So if you look at the scene here, it's actually a pretty normal exposure. For, when I say normal, it's pretty correct exposure uh, for the scene here because it was snow, it was uh, fog and uh, white clouds. Uh, so obviously I had to overexpose to get the correct exposure, but it's pretty much high key because the scene was high key. Low key is the opposite. We have, <coughs> we have uh, a small light source that illuminates a small portion of the frame. And what you see in the histogram, most of the pixels are on the left-hand side in the dark areas and almost nothing from the center to the right. So, Pretty simple setups, and essentially that's the characteristics of high key and low key. But how do we do it? During the shoot, as you saw before, by controlling the exposure, light power, direction, and quality. So you can see I did some of the examples that you see tonight are with uh, a small setup on my kitchen counter. I put a white board on the counter, a white board, <coughs> uh, not a board, but white paper as a background. And what you don't see on the right hand side, there was another white board to be a reflector. The only light here 
is from the window on the left. So over here, there's the kitchen window, uh, not even a big window. So, you know, when you read online that you need to have multiple uh, light sources and powerful light sources and all that, not necessarily, especially when you have a stationary subject, because then it's not moving, you can take long exposures. In this case, my only light source was the window light. And on this side, I, on the right hand side, I put the reflector. So if you look at the picture, you, we have a low, sorry, a high key picture. Loki uh, at the bottom here, uh, also done in mostly in camera. Um, I did all series of uh, photography, taking pictures between 11 p.m. and 3 a.m. in 20 towns in New Jersey. Uh, called it empty street at night. Uh, as you can see, it was not exactly empty. It was just before closing. Uh, and I did in Photoshop, you can see a little bit of an S curve. By the way, I apologize if uh, things are a little small when you're in the room there uh, and it's projected on the screen. I modified all my programs uh, to be uh, better for Zoom for uh, online viewing. So I have fewer pictures to flip through because of the delay in... Uh, so high key, high key is used a lot because it's clean, it's inviting, it's airy, it's happy. Uh, so it's mainly uh, bright pictures, uh, subjects that you want to look nice, to look uh, not create a strong mood or, uh, and it really works well for some products. It looks great for uh, to reduce the appearance of skin imperfections. It works really well for uh, babies, for uh, you know more glamorous shots. You'll see exa some examples, and uh, the characteristic overall bright, low contrast, minimal or no black areas or shadows, faded or no texture in the in the light tones, even solid whites. I know, judges, if I put the picture that you see on the screen, if I put it in a competition. I'm sure a judge will immediately point that I lost the texture here. You know what? I use shallow depth of field for these pictures. I use high key. And the way I did it in when I do portraits and I want high key or uh, newborn, I'll have lights in the back behind and lights to the behind me and to my sides. Uh, so I'll just use multiple flashes, or if I have a window, I'll use a window light. Sometimes I use reflections, reflectors. Um, but high key lighting style of lighting that reduces the lighting ratio in the scene. So you see equal lighting all around. Now, some people, and I've seen that in competition, they think, okay, we'll just overexpose and we have high key or underexpose and have low key. And you don't want to do that. You want pictures that either the scene works in high key or low key, or uh, you can make it work. Uh, you know, if I took the building itself and you'll see an example later, the building is high key. So if I just take our courthouse here and uh, take it with a correct exposure, it will be a high key picture. But with the grass, with the sky like that, doesn't work. The same thing with the Hotel Somerset. Just by overexposing, yes, it's overexposed and a lot of white or bright colors, but it's not a good high key picture. So you really need to look at the subject and see, does it really fit? Does it tell the story? Do, I, do we express our emotions correctly? Now, as I mentioned, some high key pictures are because the subject is already high key. And if you take the correct exposure, it will be a high key picture, like the one you see on the left. Uh, I took, uh, this is the New York uh, Public Library on Fifth Avenue. And uh, so everything is pretty much high key. Yes, I had to overexpose because to get the correct exposure, the same with snow, a snow scene. If you want the correct exposure, you don't shoot it at nominal exposure because then you'll get gray snow. 
you want it to be white. You don't want it to go overboard, but you want it white. The same thing here, the building is almost white. So you want the correct exposure, which meant overexposing to get the right tones. But that's a naturally, a natural uh, high key scene. The picture on the right is not because the tulip is, and it's just the bud. The green, if you pay the attention, uh, tulips are dark green. So this one was actually pushed and forced to be high key. I did it because I wanted to focus on, to concentrate on shapes and a little bit the textures and the curves. And I didn't want it to be dark. I wanted it to be airy, to be a positive type of uh, presentation. Um, so considerations. So the main objective is to light the subject and the background and eliminate reduced shadows. Uh, so front light, preferably soft, uh, because if you have harsh light, you'll have shadows to deal with. Uh, multiple light sources that wrap the subject, but it can be a single light source and a reflector to balance it, like I've done here. Now, as you can see in the picture here, I did get some shadows because, of course, the light, first because I had to remove the whiteboard, uh, the reflector, but also, even if I had it there, uh, the bright light from the window would be uh, more powerful, the reflector. And that's where I take care of things in post-processing. So yes, I can help it by uh, eliminating some of the darker areas. But the scene on the left is completely natural. Snow on the ground, kind of almost white, bright sky with clouds. And I just love it. I put this one in a competition and I can tell you, it didn't do well. The judge wanted me to crop it right in the middle. Um, so as I mentioned, works well uh, with uh, more glamorous. She's actually an actress. Uh, um, and I took the picture in Central Park. So I did use multiple lights uh, to light her. Um, this one, one flesh, and uh, she had a white umbrella and she was in the sun, so she got nice light from the back. It was not even my shoot. I took this picture, but she was there for an engagement shoot and the photographer was terrible. And I asked if she wants me to take a couple of pictures. Naturally taken on the street in Minneapolis. And I love bright backgrounds. I know in a competition, it will be killed. So I forced this one. Uh, she was against, uh, against the building. She climbed on one building and there was a wall behind her, uh, but I did overexpose and I did in post-processing pushed it even further. Uh, this I did just recently um, and uh, I had, two flashes pointing behind me and to the side, there was a big window or the door with light coming from her left. And I put another flash on the wall behind her, kind of towards the ceiling. So you don't see a, a spot from the flash. And in post-processing, I kind of cleaned up a little bit. Their, their bedroom, was all white, the white on the bed, uh, the cover on the bed. Uh, also, I did that with three flashes. One was on the camera pointing to the one wall behind me and two flashes to the two sides uh, at an angle. So light came back and wrapped uh, the scene. Three flashes pointing to the ceiling. She and the baby were on the rug. Now, this one I wanted intentionally to make high key, definitely not her skin tone. She is Indian, so she has uh, dark, dark, much darker skin. So these are the type of things that work uh, with high key. Uh, this one is the youngest girl to ever give me the middle finger. She's not the only one, but the youngest one. 
And you can really take it to an extreme. And, uh, you know, again, something that judges and competitions don't usually like, uh, they don't like when suddenly you don't, you lose the edge. You know what? Painters use the techniques. They use with sharp edges, soft edges, and lost edges. And uh, I like to use it in my photography. So I have a lot of pictures with technically mergers where either black goes into black or white goes into white. Just a few more examples. They're both, he's an actor, she's an actress, and they needed uh, pictures for their flyers and stuff. So this one is in the setup that I did on my kitchen counter. Uh, very easy to do. You don't need a lot of lights. Again, no artificial light, just the window light with the board to reflect it and clean up in uh, post-processing. This was all natural. Uh, last year or the year before we had snow in April. Uh, we already uh, in the supermarket, they had uh, tulips. I bought some tulips, put them uh, and I just put it in the snow in my yard. And then I put some on the driveway, waited for the snow to come and took pictures when it's already dusted with snow. So here are the examples of doing still life high key with very, a very simple setup and then more <coughs> natural looking high key images. These are stolen from my bad weather program. Um, yeah, this one, um, wait, I had to wait a long, long time until I got only one person on the steps. Either nobody or groups would go up or down. It's in a MoMA, MoMA in New York. And this is the courthouse. So you can do high key with bright subjects just with a correct exposure which is using the positive exposure compensation. And foggy scenes often become high key if you expose them correctly. So low key is about setting mood and creating, by the way, any questions before I go into low key? Okay. Setting the mood and creating an emotive image. The picture are dark, the pictures are dark, moody, dramatic, mysterious. And one thing that uh, sometimes uh, we have the wrong idea. If you create a an personally expressive image that will make the viewer think or interpret or feel something. That's important to me when I judge, it's important to see that the picture speaks to me. It makes me think, it makes me feel. It doesn't mean that the viewer has to get the same feelings that you had when you created that image. So when you create an image based on your experiences, your background, your stories, the viewer doesn't necessarily know them. And very often you create art that makes other people think and feel, and it's not necessarily what you felt, but you make people feel. So the same thing with low key, each viewer may interpret the scene differently from others, depending on personal background and experience. Um, and the characteristics, overall dark, high contrast, limited bright areas. You only take some small areas that have light. In this case, it was with a single uh, flash behind a little uh, soft box. And, uh, and of course, in post-processing, I cleaned it up. And uh, it's okay 
to not have texture in the dark areas. So here again, we can have scenes that are low key uh, because of the scene itself and the way the lighting is in the scene or the ones that you create uh, in your studio or even outside. You saw before in, when I did night photography on the street. Both require a negative exposure compensation. So the same way I had to overexpose for high key, uh, if you have a dark scene, you don't want the camera to make it look like a day scene. So as I mentioned earlier, we want to keep things dark. We want to illuminate, uh, to control what where the light goes and limit it to certain areas of the picture. So two scenarios here, this one uh, with a watch and uh, coins, I pretty much put it on a dark background in a relatively dark uh, room and I used a single flashlight to just shine the light on a narrow area. I actually put some tissues over the flashlight so it's not so bright. Um, and the setup on my kitchen counter, essentially the same idea, but reverse, uh, reverse of what I did with the high uh, key. Put a blackboard in the background, a blackboard, uh, in the base. And then what well, you don't see later, I put a black board here. And I also restricted the light that came through the window. So I put something to block most of the light from the window. So I wanted to have mostly the light from the candle, but not only. There was a little bit of light coming and you can see the reflections uh, here. Or you can do with almost no setup. Uh, this is, by the way, the same girl that you saw in front of the library. She's my grandson's au pair. Uh, this was in Pittsburgh in my daughter's house. Uh, she has a sunroom and we were sitting uh, not close to the window, but pretty far from the window in the late afternoon before it got dark. And it's all natural light through the window. That's all that we had. I shot her against the fireplace that had dark uh, bricks. And as always in post-processing, I was able to control the light a little bit or control the, the way it looks. When she came, I asked her to take the pictures. Uh, she came to me with a white t-shirt. I said, no. I need something dark because again, you want the scene to fit the mood, fit what you want to do. So I needed her to wear a dark, she put a dark sweater. My grandson in exactly the same spot as she was, I just had him turn more. She was completely in a profile picture. Him, I wanted him to turn a little bit towards me. So I got a little bit more of his face, a little bit more both eyes and get kind of, um, the light splitting over the middle of the face. Uh, so, but again, no, no accessories. It was all done with window light. That's it. The right background, the right clothing, and I got it. And this one I just used with, uh, in a completely dark room, and I did it with uh, light painting. So she was in a, just sitting on the chair and I took a flashlight. The camera was for 30 seconds on the tripod and with a flashlight, I painted her with light to create that uh, effect. And I did the same here and it's the same girl. Uh, so the 30 second exposure, she sat for 10 seconds. Then I turned off the light, asked her to go and stand behind the chair and lean on the chair. And then I turned on the light for 10 more seconds and painted there and created it's one exposure just with her moving and two lights naturally. And then you can do some vignetting and get the effect. Uh, straight, almost straight out of the camera, there was one light above her. 
This was at 1 a.m. Uh, in Morristown. It was the last Thursday of the summer break. There were, uh, most of the streets were empty, but the main street had a couple of bars. So there were some young, uh, young kids there. Um, and she had an argument with some of her friends. They were standing on the other side of the sidewalk. I asked her if I can take a few pictures of her. So I did not use any lighting. It was all uh, from the, the, the store had a sign with a light. So it was right above her. And window light, just when my, my dog was on the couch, I took the picture. So more ideas for Loki. This was taken in a museum. Now this one is completely fake and you'll see the picture. Um, this is the picture. I took it daylight and uh, she's the same girl who climbed on that building. Uh, it was in Memphis and I just used in camera raw and I use camera raw, you can use Lightroom, it's exactly the same tools. Uh, I, I use camera raw, I use four masks and I'll demonstrate it later. But I gradient, dark gradients from the sides here, dark gradients from the left side and a little bit brightening of the face in the center. So this was all done in post-processing. And these are from the setup that I did on my counter. Uh, a little bit cleanup in post-processing. So if there are any leaks of light, I eliminated them, but pretty much uh, just with the little window light. And this one, I used the flash. I, I put the flower against, but like six, seven feet from a gray background. I just put some blanket on, the, on our TV screen the big screen and it was my background. And then all I used for lighting, one flash that pointed to the left, to the wall on the left and the light was reflected into. So it was soft, came back to the flower. I didn't want too harsh and that's it. One flash and the same thing here. Pretty natural, pretty natural. So you can find scene that have low key illumination just out there. And this one, the same setup on my counter. So as you can see, it was more than, so the window, we still get some reflections from the window, but I needed some light to come in. I can tell you, I was drunk when I was done shooting. And from the night scenes uh, on the street, the whole purpose of this project, uh, the empty street at night, was to play with light and shadows, mood, by having some bright highlights, but then a lot of uh, dense blacks, dark shadows. And uh, this was done mostly in camera, but every picture I show went through camera roll and Photoshop for some tonal adjustments. Now, you don't need fancy equipment for that. So uh, one of the clubs asked me when we scheduled this presentation, asked me, can we do it with the cell phone? And I said, yes, as long as you know how to use exposure compensation, you can do it. And here I demonstrated it. So for Heike, the same setup on the counter. Now I kept the reflector on and then the picture after I process it. So you can see out of the camera, well, it's not out of the camera. I shot uh, a separate picture. Uh, there are some shadows but that 
I toned down. I didn't want to eliminate them completely because the shadows give some dimension. So I wanted to keep some shadows, but I made them softer. And for Loki, uh, the same idea, uh, the same setup with the phone under exposing. So this is really the the slideshow, and I'll be glad to go. I'll be glad to answer questions and then go into Photoshop, camera, um, and um, I'll be glad to to answer and then go to the demonstration. Anybody? Nobody? We have a question in the room, hold on. Yeah. Yeah, hi, Eric, interesting presentation, thanks. So your, your presentation reminds me of a shot that I took in a castle in, in Germany. And when I when I took it originally, or after I took it originally, I thought, no, I should have turned up the ISO. But maybe it's a good low key shot. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I, I really, one of the things, and I have a whole program on night photography, and uh, I, the first thing I say, be careful not to make night pictures exposed to and look like day pictures. You want to keep the mood. That's why we do night photography. Uh, and uh, all my night shots that I did for my project, actually it was one of the parameters because I defined a lot of details in my project plan, were shot at F10 and ISO 1000. So all with the same lens, ISO one, the, there's one exception, but pretty much 20 towns <laughs> that I shot F10, ISO 1000. So I have some noise because it does work uh, for the mood, especially in the black and white pictures. And shutter speed was to get the correct exposure, but obviously underexposing. And uh, you want to capture the mood, you want to capture the, the night scene, or even if you're in a dark area, it doesn't have to be at night. Um, hey, uh, Eric, would this be a good spot to take a five minute break here at the church? Sure. Or at the sure. library, actually, wherever we are. <laughs> we're at a library yeah I used, to come, I used to come to the church both sides because yeah we, we just commit. moved so it's yeah be a while. yeah 2023 yeah. i'll be saying church all year yeah okay all right, we're gonna take a five minute break then okay if anybody wants to unmute themselves they can yeah i stopped the sharing so i'll go back when I go into further show. area very little area uh to be lit uh and this one is minus uh negative 3.67 uh ev so three and two thirds of a stop uh under exposing 
how I pick these numbers, you know, we have digital cameras, we can see after we take the shot, how it looks like. So I made the adjustments. Obviously street photo, well, for the streets that I did empty street, it wasn't an issue because I did uh, stationary subjects. It was empty street, the whole idea. Um, but as you can see, the exposure needs to be adjusted uh, minus three. So three stops under exposing. Uh, because I didn't want the light, the areas close to the candle to be really washed out. Um, but besides that, uh, you'll see the post-processing. I think that's the area that is a little bit more, uh, more tricky, but not difficult. Uh, you'll see how quickly I make the adjustments that uh, I want to make. Uh, Terry, did I answer your question or do you- Yeah, very well. That gave a nice overview. Thank you. Okay. Sure. So let me close uh, this program. I just uh, Greg has a question. Hold on, please. Yeah. Hey, Eric. So on the picture that you have highlighted right now with the candle. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So do you ever do anything where you try not to blow out the the light of the candle itself? to where you use multiple exposures to whether it be, um, what's it called when you- Yeah, I know, it's HDR, like sort of HDR. Kind of thing. Uh, usually, so this is another thing where sometimes I do, in this case, I did not. Also when I do, and sometimes I'll just paint some tone into it, which I believe I actually did here. Um, but, uh, for this, I, I didn't do any HDR. And for my night shots on the street, out of uh, a few hundred pictures that I took, only one I needed to do HDR. Uh, but you see, when I do take this type of pictures, you know, I'm not trying to get the right exposure on the light source itself. So. Uh, actually, when I talk about night photography, I say I, I meter the light close to the light source, but not too close because I'm not going to try. If I'll try to make this one look, let's say yellow, everything else will go black. And, you know, a lot of the scenes I'm not, well, obviously these pictures I was on a tripod, but um, I, the light sources, I don't care if I need to do something in post-processing, I'll do it in post-processing. Okay. So, okay, now the panels are going to be a little bit of a problem. Let me try. Okay, so, I'll take a picture that is generally uh, low key because I have, and, and this was just my grandson uh, outside against the wall that was in the shade. So it's easy to take a picture like this and really, and I'm not going to go to a lot of things right now because I'll do a lot of other cleanup when, if I really process it. So you see, just by starting, and you can you can make it low key very quickly. Uh, I just love the new uh, the new tools that we got uh, with Camera Raw or um, or or light. Oh, the panel is. I thought I moved it to a place where it will not irritate me, but no, okay. Go back to the mask. You know, and just with a little bit of the masks, you can really, um, and I'll create multiple masks uh, to, to really get the tones. Here it's almost, it, it was done very nicely without that, but you see, you can really uh, do it uh, very easily 
even without going into Photoshop. And you can add, uh, if I wanted a radial in the middle here to just kind of, uh, and maybe increase the exposure a little bit. Um, so again, you get the idea. I don't need to go much more, but you see, this is a pretty simple way to, to create, uh, create high key, low key. Um, and yeah, I'm not going to even bring this one to Photoshop. Sometimes I need to clean up some stuff, but this one, I don't really need to do anything. Uh, but if I'll take an example where I have a picture that is not originally uh, low key and I want to make it. And, and again, to do things quickly, uh, you know, I clean, corrected the white balance, uh, but then once again, actually I can just select the people and create a mask and maybe increase the contrast a little bit and then create another mask and select the background and really, darken it and then yeah you you may need to take a brush and clean up a little bit you know it missed a little bit but also if i want to uh, control it and oh this was not a good way and i'm doing everything with the mouse now not with the tablet uh, but you can really, uh, if you got a picture that really has the right mood and the right, uh, yeah, the right ingredients for high key or low key, uh, you can, with post processing, really, uh, really improve it. You know, something that you can do very quickly. Any questions before I? exit this one. Okay. And for high key, uh, so this is really the raw file. You saw the picture in the presentation. Uh, this is the raw file. So this is, as you can see, I used multiple lights, but because there was the window to my left, there was it was brighter, which again, for a picture that I wanted to give that, I wanted some depth. I didn't want it all uh, to be, um, to be uh, very flat, but uh, today, with the tools, it's again, so easy to select. Uh, it finds the people, just amazing what they did with the uh, masking tools here. I can select the background, lighten it. And well, I can go even further. And very easily make it a high key, uh, high key picture. And uh, yeah, and if I want to do, and usually in Photoshop, I'll make some, I'll do some fine tuning if I want it a little brighter. If I want to add some glow, I'll add some glow. And, and of course, for a picture like that, I would definitely crop it and get rid of the, the jeans, definitely is not what we need in this picture. So as you can see here demonstrating to you, it took me a couple of minutes. If I do it by myself, not as a demo, it's 
very quick doing these things. And uh, this woman I actually ran into in Rialto Beach. I was there with the, of course, with the dog and um, it was very foggy. Um, I saw her, she was trying to teach her friend how to take her pictures. She needed some portraits so for her website. So I asked her if she wants me to take the pictures. I took 40 some pictures of her. And I say, you know how to pose. She says, she's a photographer. She knows how to pose people. Uh, so she does what she tells others. I looked at her website later. Uh, she's a really good lifestyle photographer in Phoenix, Arizona. She took pictures of me and the dog. Um, anyway, uh, so you see the idea, you can do it all in post-processing. Of course, here now, uh, the saturation is not so, it's too much. But you can do these things very, very easily. Here we go. And if I want, sometimes I'll pull the blacks a little bit more. So we see a little bit more definition. Any questions? I'll stop sharing. You guys are quiet. So I'm done with the presentation. I'll answer questions. If not, uh... Eric, I don't have any questions, but that was a great presentation. Thank you, Vicky. Yeah, Eric, there were no probably no questions on the uh, Photoshop or the Lightroom or the what you did with the masking. It was very clear and very complete. So very good. Thank you, uh, Eric. You you've inspired me to go back to photographs that I didn't think made it because I couldn't get it in camera. So now I have a whole new world in front of me that I had not thought of. So thank you very, very much. Very welcome, Deborah. Well, I, I've done the same. And especially if I come home with pictures that I don't like as out of the camera, I try to see if I can do other things. And uh, I mean, I haven't judged this club, but some of you belong to other clubs. And you know, I look for when I judge, I want to see not the picture about the subject, but what the subject represents. I want to see what you create to make it personally expressive, to see what you do to make it different. And those of you who see my work on Facebook, yes, I did go on a long trip and visited some parks, but most of the pictures that I take are of mundane subjects that uh, I like to do something on my own uh, rather than the pretty landscapes that everybody shoots and they all look the same. Uh, Heike and Loki I've done, as I said, before I prepared the presentation, uh, I, I, I've done it because it's a way to create some picture that express either happiness or uh, positive view or a little bit more moody and um, maybe not the happiest pictures. <laughs> well, Eric, thank you very much. Uh, we really enjoyed your presentation. And a couple of folks in the audience here were saying, wow, he makes it look easy while you're doing <laughs> your uh, Photoshop. <laughs> you know. <laughs> It, it is, there are certain techniques that you think are very difficult and very complex. Uh, Vicky, I don't remember if you were at the club, the, in the Mammoth Club, when I did painting with light painting. Yes. Yeah, you know, and almost every picture when you, you know, you can't just make adjustments because you are holding lights, flashlights, and it's not like you control the exposure. At the end of the day, 
90% of the pictures come out. I, I did it right there on the spot and it projected on the screen and uh, you could see it. things are easier than you may think. And uh, it just, you, you just need to build confidence in doing that. Colton, well, just have to practice. Yeah. <laughs> Craig said it's easy when you've done it 500 times. <laughs> That's true, true, but you'll see that after you do it, you know what? Everything starts with concerns and then you're nervous. You know, I hated photographing people. Uh, and probably 28, 29 years ago, uh, no, a little less than that, maybe 20 years ago, somebody came. Oh, it was more uh, to the Plainfield <laughs> Camera Club and did a presentation on photographing strangers. And he said, just go and do it once and you'll see how easy it becomes to go and talk to strangers and photograph strangers, even if you do ca candid and not talk to the people. And you know, I love to do street photography and engage with strangers and once you do it only a couple of times and you build confidence and you see how people respond to it and now it's easy now it's fun uh, you engage well with strangers and with everybody <laughs> you know the dog helps a lot people ask me on, <laughs> when i do my street photography program they ask what's the most important equipment and i say a dog <laughs> <laughs> Because when you go with a dog, first you don't look creepy. If I stopped and started talking to you by myself, you think, what does he want? Uh, when you have a little dog, you don't look so creepy. And usually people the dog is already, in... what? People come over and pet the dog. And people come over, or you know, even if they don't come over and you walk by them and they look, I just say, oh, she's friendly. And then immediately it starts a conversation. Um, so yeah, she's my partner for shooting. That's a good thing she's friendly. Yes, and she's good in the car because we go on these really long road trips and she's really good in the cars and hotels. But my wife already told me after her, we are not getting another dog Aww. because I'm too dedicated to the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Jen gets jealous. She doesn't complain, you know. She doesn't say I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's <laughs> she's skiing in California and coming back and going to Israel for two weeks with my oh. our daughter and the grandson. Yeah. yeah, that's how you keep the marriage going. You stay apart. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Vicky knows what we've been through. <laughs> yep. Well, again, thank you very much. We uh, really enjoyed your presentation, Eric. We're going to turn the lights on now. We have to get out of here by 10. Yeah. Yeah. It was thank great. you very thank much. You, Eric. I appreciate the invite. Thank you. Thank you again very, very much, Eric. Good night. Oh, one, one last question. You give workshops or classes or lessons? So, what I do, I do either one-on-one -on -one coaching or I do group, um, you know, we've done street photography. So I, I used to do it like public. Now I just, if a camera club there, you know, 